Okay, testing, testing. Are we on? Do you guys reckon, is that enough ice? So we'll see how this goes. This is a little less formal than I normally do it, but sometimes you just gotta sit down and do stuff. So what I wanna do today, I want to do some ADA stuff. And I wanna split strings. I wanna take in a string and to put it in C++ terms, get a vector of strings. It's because I realized that I was working on my tic-tac-toe game and then I just stopped. So this is a pretty vital step. Let's get things started. Let's make a project. So I'll change into my ADA folder and I will initialize a binary project called um, split stuff. It doesn't matter. It's going to ask me for a bunch of things and I'll just keep hitting enter because I guess I'm too lazy to configure the defaults. That's fine. So on the Visual Studio Code side, I will just get this open. Yes, I do trust myself sometimes. So I'll go into my source folder and I'm going to, I'll set this as a homework exercise. If you want to make this look nice, you can compartmentalize this into a bunch of different files, but I'm just going to do it all in one. Quick game's a good game, as they say. So the thing with, there are sort of two main things that I'm going to touch on. They are unbounded strings and vectors. So in ADA, strings are weird. I guess the closest analogy would be like, in C, when you're dealing with strings, you need to define the size of the string most of the time in order to work with it. And if that string size changes, you need to sort of reallocate it. And that's similar to the way Ada wants you to handle things. It's really good if we know the size of things up front. And if you don't know the size of things up front, you can do it, but you need to use a different library. So we're going to be using unbounded strings. And then the other thing we're going to be using is containers or generics. In C++, you can do this as simply as like standard vector float, just like that. In ADA, it's similar, but a little bit different. So to start with, we'll do the string stuff. So I'm going to import the text IO package. And I'm also going to import the um, unbounded strings. So to start with, let's simply read an unbounded string and then put that back to the terminal and say, hey, you entered. So I'm going to define a variable called line and this data type is going to be an unbounded string, just like that. And the cool thing about unbounded strings is we can just declare them. We don't need to declare like how many characters they have, anything like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first up, I'm just going to get something from the user. So I'll say, hey, write some input. And then I'll call get line to one, get the input. And then I'll write that back. So I'll say, you wrote, geez, my spelling's off. Uh, you wrote, and the line. Okay, so this is a completely naive way of handling it. That looks pretty reasonable. We do need to do some conversions, but I think it's a good exercise just to run this and see like what happens. So I'll go over to the terminal and we'll go Alir build. And it says, okay. So first up I spelled with wrong. So we're not off to a great start, but that's fine. Try that again. So we've got a bunch of errors. Got a bunch of style points deducted as well. But over here, 
expected private type. Okay, so this is line nine. So this is happening right here where we call get string. So we say get string and get, uh, sorry, get line. And get line will give us a string. So I need to convert that type, no problem. I'll just pop in here and it turns out the conversion function is to unbounded just like that and you can probably guess what's going to happen next but you know let's just take it one step at a time okay cool so we've got another error this is happening up here on line 10 and that's where i'm putting that line back and it's saying expected a standard string basically uh, no problem so the way we handle that is to string and we can then concatenate those together. Alrighty, so it looks like everything ran. Let's go run that. It says write some input. I'll go hello world. You write hello world. Awesome. Let's have some fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function, declare a function that takes in a string and it takes in like a, a pattern and then it splits basically words around that pattern. So typically it would be a space, but it could be anything. Now, in order to do this, I can have a variable number of words when I split my string. And so I'm going to need a container that can be appended to, can be resized in C++. You'd think of this as a vector. In Python, you'd think of this as a list. In Ada, this is also called a vector, but there's a bit of a difference here. So the way I would handle this is I would call in, I'd say, uh, use the Ada containers vectors package, but I would not use it. See, so if I go in and go use Ada vectors just say everything under my breath anyway so if I go ahead and build this we will now get an error and it's this is happening up here on line three error a generic package is not allowed in a use clause so in C++ when you have a generic class of some sort like a vector or an unordered map or an array or something that's actually a, like a meta instruction. That's an instruction to the compiler to say, construct this template, you know, construct this thing on the fly. So in that sense, the standard vector or the standard array or whatever it is, is sort of like an abstract base class. Like it's not, it's not source code that you can directly include and use. Same sort of thing here. So here I sort of just declare that I want my program to know about these things. But then in order to actually use that, I'm going to need to construct a concrete package that I can work with. So I'm going to construct a package and I'll call this string list. Okay. And I'll say this is, I'll construct a new, a new instance of this package going to need to pass in two things. I'm going to take an index type, which for me will be just natural numbers. The really good benefit here is you can define your own custom data type if you want a constrained integer. I'm going to have element type and in this case, it will be an unbounded string. And it needs to be an unbounded string because otherwise, if you think about the fundamental machine code, which is generated, we could just call it you know, an array of strings. And that would be fine if we knew how big those strings were. But because we've got completely generic objects, we don't know up front how, what size these strings are going to be. They could all be different sizes. I'm just going to go unbounded string. Okay. Now, 
the way we go ahead and declare one of these things is like this. So let's say on a variable named words, starter type will be string list. But then within that, there's a subclass called vector. And that's the one that I want. So this is doing the work similar to C++ saying, hey, standard vector of standard strings or something like that. So again, it's really great just to build this from time to time. Knowing me, there's a good chance this is going to fail, but no, we lost style points, but that's fine. I can live with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the real meat of it, which is making this function. So I'm going to declare function split. We're going to take in a few things. We're going to take in a line. And we're going to return that uh, string list vector. Okay. All right. So I'm going to need to declare a few local variables before I do this function. Here's the way this is going to work. Ada has a function that takes in an unbounded string and it looks within that unbounded string for the index of another substring. And then Ada has a function which will start from a given position and read off to an end position, take that data and slice, basically, just like slicing in Python. So I'm going to need really three variables. One variable is going to be my return variable that I'll return at the end. Another variable for the start position of a word. Another variable for the end position of a word. So I'm going to declare, let me go i. Um, and I'll have pause for position. And then I'm finally going to have, yeah, very imaginatively call this list. So I've declared my variables. I can now begin my function. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a loop, which will just be searching through the string. So what I'll be doing continually is searching the string. So I want to get the index within my line of my delimiter and I want to search from position i onwards. Okay, so what this is going to do is this is going to return a natural number which will be the position of the beginning of the slice. If we search for the string and it fails it will give us a value of zero and we can exit out of that loop when basically we get zero. That's it. Then we can go take our list and append to that. What we're going to append is this unbounded slice. So we're going to take a line and we're going to slice from position i, it's the beginning of where we were up to, up to we'll go position minus one because position is the beginning of the delimiter. Next thing I'll do is I will increment. So again, position is the beginning of the delimiter in the string. And then we skip ahead that many characters, right? So if we've just got a space, that's a length of one, no problem. If we've got a custom delimiter, like a, a word, then we might have to skip three characters or something. So then we end, and then we definitely want to return our list. So what I could do is, you know, put in some code and test this, but I think probably a good idea to build it. Yeah. So it's saying on line 29, hmm, okay. I guess we've got to convert it. Probably nicer ways to do it, but there you know, that's what it says. 
Let's try it. Oh, it worked. I was going to say I did try to put some errors in here on purpose, but it seems like it's handling it for once. We've got the line from the user. Now what we'll do is we'll sort of put this back. We'll go put line and we'll say, alrighty, you said that. Now here's the words that you said. And let's get those words. So we'll say words, we'll store in there, we'll go. Pretty similar to a lot of programming languages that you're used to, we can have for each loops, basically. So we can go, we'll go for word of words loop. And then we'll simply just, yeah, put that back onto the uh, terminal. Okay, cool. So it's complaining, but that's totally fine. Let's run this. We'll go, hello world. Ooh, okay. You wrote hello world. Words, hello, that is a word. Okay, what do you think went wrong? So this is actually pretty common. I've done this myself in many other languages. What I'm doing is I'm repeatedly looking for the delimiter. So in this case, repeatedly looking for the space. And every time I see that space, I copy um, from the last place I saw a space up to the next place I see a space. And I take that and I append it into my vector. So that's the next thing. But this is not handling the case where that space that I see is the last space in the word, but there's still useful stuff beyond that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same append statement, but just right at the end. So I'll say list append, and I'll do the same thing. I'll take an unbounded slice of my line from, yeah, from position I up to just the end, up to the length of line. Just like that. Okay, let's try that again. Hello world. Words, hello and world. Okay, look, so I hope that you enjoyed this and um, happy coding, consume a lot of ice, and I will see you later. Bye. Hey, so I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters. I know normally I put in text, but after I wiped my MacBook, I thought, let's do a read. So thank you to Antonin Caret, Dankil Falls, Declan, Andalon Studios, Jason Coleman, Matthew Derrick, Moim, Shreya, and Skibbity Pop. Thank you, my dudes. Much appreciated. If you would like to support the channel, it's just $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, and it really goes a long way to uh, helping me buy Nice things like coffee, which comes invaluable. You okay there? Which is really useful for uh, both coding and video production. If you can't afford to support the channel, no problem. I, I don't require it. Probably the best thing you can do is to comment on the videos. Let me know what sort of content you would like to see. I produce a little bit of everything, but otherwise, have a great time. Bye.